What up guys, it's your boy here, Mark, here, Mark, Pinot Bounce Ball Culture. I'm here with Dan Cabea. How are you feeling? Very good, as you know. Awesome. We're going to go straight down into your story, man. Tell me a little bit about your basketball story. How did it start for you? Hey, man. Um, basketball for me started, I feel late. Um, I officially really started playing basketball in the junior high, grade nine. Uh, I was not good. I was not good at basketball. I was just a multi-athlete, could do everything. Um, but surprisingly, after grade 12, I managed to get a pro contract in wow. Belgium. So that was, that was crazy, you know, because at 15 years old, you can't play, you don't know how to play. Yeah. And then by 18 years old, you got yourself a pro contract. That's insane, yeah. Um, I could say most of that was due to my, my freakish athleticism. <laughs> but at the same time, um, I could say I worked hard for it. I mean, I, I used to care a little bit. Yeah. But um, yeah, that, that, was, that was mainly how it started, yeah. you know. Um, you kind of want to know how it ended too, because it's done. Yeah. Well, I also <laughs> yeah. wanted to know who did you grow up playing? Who did you grow up playing? Um, what team did you used to watch when you were a kid that kind of inspired you to kind of pursue basketball and really? Vince play? Carter, man. Oh, yeah. uh, look, I came. I came from Africa, uh, fresh. Like I didn't know anything. <laughs> uh, like basketball was a, like a mystery to me, you know? Soccer was more my thing, so I saw Vince Carter and some red and ones doing uh, the between the legs dunk in the All-Star Weekend. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, like that, what is that? That's insane. Yeah. So then all of a sudden I care about basketball. Um, I didn't really know Michael Jordan, yeah. but then I knew he's like this bald guy with hoops, you know? That, that's all I knew, yeah. right? So um, <laughs> Vince Carter was like my MJ at the time. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, Toronto, like it's just, yeah, the Raptor culture was all I knew. Yeah. Because um, I was in Hamilton, Ontario. Um, but then I moved to Edmonton, Alberta, and there was no basketball there at the time. It was very dead. Yeah. So I just, you know, that's what changed yeah. everything. I yeah. had to change it up. The Raptors weren't around no more, you know? <laughs> exactly. But, yeah. But, yeah. Well, but from playing to Bel uh, in Belgium, coming back here, what kind of got you into pro dunking or in the sport of? Because that's something probably have, a lot of people have never heard of till now. It's getting really the hype because of Jordan Kilgannon and a lot of these players that are just jumping. Man, oh man, you know it's, it's interesting how you say that because uh, back in back when I was like I said, I saw Vince Carter jumping in All Star Weekend, and uh, that was that was everything you know for me. Seeing that on TV, that made me want to dunk. You know, I was like, how do you dunk? How do you jump? How do you do that? You know, so. My goal was to, uh, my brother wanted to be the fastest person. I was like, I want to be the fastest and jump the highest yeah. because I want to be able to do what that guy could do. So um, back then, like 2000, let's, let's go forward from then. Let's go to 2005. I wanted to dunk pro. I, yeah. Like I wanted to dunk all day, but I didn't know, uh, we didn't know how to make it happen because yeah. there was nothing out there. Um, I had Team Flight Brothers contact me in 2008, 2007. 2007 about uh, come dunk you know come to Florida and um, I was like like no you know it's not like that's weird yeah. you know can't do that you got to play basketball yeah. so um, it was almost kind of looked down upon at the time so I ran away from it you know because I was able to do the stuff I do today back way back then so yeah. it was like man what's going on right yeah. and then um, I quit I was yeah. like, I'm not going to dunk, I'm not going to show people that I can do this no more because yeah. I don't want to be labeled, yeah. right? So that's kind of why I ran away from dunking. And then to see today, uh, in 2016, when All-Star Weekend came to Toronto, I got the opportunity to um, perform, mm -hmm. all right, uh, compete, I guess, whatever you could say, for um, the national dunk thing with Bell. Yeah. And so I was like, hey, what is this thing, you know? Like, should I just do it? Yeah. And uh, I was kind of motivated by um, the youth that I was training at the time, a bunch of youth, um, their parents, they motivated me to go and do it. Yeah. Like, come on, go and uh, show the youth how to do it. I was like, okay, why not? You know, yeah. I trained them, let me show them how to do it. Yeah. I went there and uh, I won that contest and um, it opened up a bunch of floodgates to dunking again, which was super weird because I had left that table years ago, so then, yeah. It just opened up a whole new road and I was like, hey, wait a second. Maybe I stopped playing basketball, but maybe I could dunk a little bit because it's not that strenuous in my body. Yeah. That's what I said to myself. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, I took it more serious this uh, last uh, 2018 summer. Yeah. I decided to you know, enter the dunk world and travel a little bit, right? Yeah. 
I was, uh, that's how it started, I guess, yeah. and to where I am at today with it. So it's kind of good. A good journey. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which leads us to with your apparel. Tell us a little bit how that kind of started from maybe this kind of came about or just the birth of this came from your experience mm -hmm. creating back into pro dunking. Yeah, um, I mean, the brand, I was in Africa this summer mm -hmm. and um, it was so interesting because I hadn't been back since <laughs> like uh, I was like 10, since 9, yeah, 9. Broke, yeah. So um, yeah, it was insane. I went back and I uh, was told so many times, hey, why are you always representing these specific brands? And I'm like, well, I know they sponsor me, you know, yeah. they're like, well, but I mean, where's yours? Like, yeah. your you brand? seem like you should have your, your own brand. I was like, what do you mean? They're like, I mean, like, we, like, they, we love you out here. You know, I was like, really? I was like, okay, that's weird. They're like, well, you're, this is a home. You gotta know that at home, we're always gonna love you when you come back. Like, yeah. you gotta, you gotta come back more often. So they're like, we need you to start, it's like, start, start something for us to, to support you more. And mm -hmm. uh, I was like, whoa, that, I never felt that before. So um, when I came back to Toronto, I was like, hey, I've always wanted to push my brand but I didn't care to do it because yeah. um, it was more on the humble side. Yeah. But I decided to do it for other people. I was like, hey, you know what? Let me create a, a, better, purpose a better purpose. Now, you know, it let me go through. Uh, Jump Coat is, is the brand. Mm -hmm. And Jump Coat was um, about, not me, but about a group of people that have this talent. And so everyone has talent. There's talent uh, inside you. You have talent. Mm -hmm. I have talent. Um, he has talent, everyone has talent. So the whole point of Jump Goat to me, you know me as a Jump Goat, you know? Yeah. So that's where the attention comes to and I want to speak on that. I want to be able to let you know you could be the, your own goat. You could be your own goat, mm -hmm. right? And everyone could be their own goat in their own facet. So that's what the brand represents. Um, but the way we're gonna show that is by going around to communities and actually doing that. Mm -hmm. Showing kids, inspiring them, number one, through what we do, our craft. Mm -hmm. um, we wanna grow this team so that um, all the dunkers that want to actually be dunkers and not just basketball players mm -hmm. can do that, mm -hmm. you know? Not just tell them, hey, you have to play basketball. No, we want to create an opportunity for everyone to um, enjoy what we do, mm -hmm. let the kids see it, be inspired, say, hey, maybe I can't make it there, but I can do that, you know? And, and, and push for something that makes them their greatest they could be. Mm -hmm. um, so going around communities, churches, orphanages, this is what um, Jump Coat's all about right now. Mm -hmm. And so if the brand ends up being like something that you like to wear, awesome. But like for now, to me, it's, it's, it's a movement, man. And I want everyone to understand that and feel it and uh, just be the greatest you can be. You don't have to wear the brand for me to know you support it. Just be the greatest you can be. I know you're doing it. That's all it's about. Wow, that's, yeah. <laughs> I that's mean, a, we're almost <laughs> coming here to a landing. I feel like we can keep talking about because that's what I'm about too. Yeah. I'm about what we can do to the community yeah. or to the people out there from our experience. That, that, that's what, that, I mean, <laughs> you think to, to me it's look, if you can't give back, why are you doing it? Mm -hmm. You know? That's true. Because um, for me, being humble, my father always taught me to be, uh, but my father left, um, you know, a, a, a full out, amazing life we can say for for his five children he kind of said hey I'm gonna leave everything so that you guys can do it okay and uh, that's movie stuff right mm -hmm. and I never really got that till I was about 20 as a father mm -hmm. and I realized that that's I guess the job as a father <laughs> you know he, he to make did, the sacrifice, sacrifice. No and I was like whoa Life is about sacrifice. That hit me more than anything. So I realized that the more you sacrifice yourself for the next, the more everything grows. Because I look at the way I've grown since what my dad's done, I'm like, wow, that's what it's all about, right? So you can't stop something from growing, someone from growing, you have to help them to grow. So, you know, if I can't, if, if we can't help each other grow, we're kind of, here for no purpose, right? But everybody looks to have a purpose. And I feel like that, um, that is something that is mine, you know, for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. Well, like, I mean, we can keep talking, but I know we're coming here for a landing. Yeah. And in terms of 
to fans out there, to followers of Pinoy basketball culture, any last words, I guess, from your basketball experience? How has that shaped you? And what can you give advice to others out there that are either thinking of pursuing their passion or found out their purpose and calling and kind of want to go about it? What's your last piece of advice to them? Um, never be afraid to fail. Um, one big thing for me is a lot of people might, it might look like I win a lot, but I lose a lot. And um, I think through losing, you win. And so, for example, you go through a workout, you're in pain, right? But then after that, you have results, right? Or you have a seed, seed that goes into a ground. Um, rain's gotta come down, right? For that to grow into a tree, right? So you all need a storm for growth. And to me, that's just the concept that uh, I live by, right? And I hope that people can understand that and um, always look to the dark sides, the bad sides, that's good times because lessons, blessings, they kind of mean the same thing to me, you know? Yeah. Awesome. That's a great piece of advice. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. I mean, appreciate sure. it. That's, I hope you guys enjoyed this segment for Pinoy Bands Ball Culture. And other than that, guys, stay balling and check out Jump Go Canada for apparels. And check out him at Mr. Kabea at Instagram for all the stuff that he does dunking mm -hmm. and for the community. I hope you guys enjoyed that ball culture segment. Our homeboy Daniel Cabella, check him out. Jump Code Canada, they're doing some amazing programs for athletes out there or for kids that are learning how to jump and learning how to dunk. But that's all we got guys for Pinoy Balance. Any last words Ingrid? Uh, be sure to check us out on social media, at Instagram, YouTube, and on Twitter, and on Facebook at Pinoy Balance. Give us a like, give us a follow, we'll shout you out too. James, last words? Uh, check out PinoyCrossover.ca. If you want to write article, just message us in social media. Awesome. Other than that, stay ballin'. <laughs>